Welcome to 401 Sunset, where we bring you to you, Winter. I'm your host, Matthew Sibeli. And today... Matt, what's going on? You got to keep it funny, keep it light. Let's get this going. Funny, eh? Hello, Windsor. Welcome to 401 Sunset, where we bring you to you, Windsor. I'm your host, Matthew Sibeli. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. But we have a great show for you, so let's, you know, we'll cut the clapping for a little bit and get to the show. Appreciate it, though. So we have Daniel Rush coming in. Uh, awesome musician. Really excited to see that. I actually kind of want to join the band myself, I know. Like, <laughs> he made traffic. Like, was, traffic was horrible this morning. But uh, then we have, we're talking TEDx, we're talking Oxley Retreat House, we're talking Lancer Sports, ladies and gentlemen, and then the carnival that has everybody <laughs> snapping their fingers with a little bit of sass, the sass carnival. But before we get into all that, my good friend Naomi Pelkey is coming in here to talk to us about TEDx. Naomi, let's give a round of applause for Naomi, guys. It's Hi, Naomi. how's it going? Good, how about you? Good, so did your uh, mother dress you again this morning? This is my fantasy dream sequence, Naomi, so just, just, <laughs> okay? Oh, okay. Anyways. But TEDx. Yes, TEDx. The organizers for TEDx were actually here last week in our studio as one of our correspondents, mm -hmm. and we did a little interview with them. So we're going to showcase that tonight on the show. So how about let's go see the TEDx? Let's see some TEDx. So I'm here with Orlando and Karun. You guys are the representatives for TED Talk X at the University of Windsor. Um, tell me a bit about it. Like, when's the last time TED Talk was at Windsor or the university? Okay. The last time TEDx came to Windsor was 2011. Okay. And well, that's just that, Windsor, right? Yeah, that was TEDx Windsor. This is the first time we are having it on campus. So this time, this is TEDx University of Windsor. This is very, very first time it's happening on the campus of University of Windsor. This is a normal thing throughout universities around the world, no? TEDx? Yeah. It's in like every single university. Most of them, like 90% of the universities have it. Okay. Even all different states, cities have it in the name of TEDx Toronto, TEDx Detroit. Every, every place has it. So what's the importance of university? Why is it significant for the University of Windsor to have TED Talk X? TED Talks are basically for spreading and sharing ideas, creativity, innovation, all different kinds of ideas as possible. Okay. So it's, it's important for university students because uh, students get a chance to give a talk, alumni get a chance to give a talk, to share their ideas, professors, staff members can get a, talk, like, can get a chance to okay. talk about something different except from their topic. To talk something creative, something innovative that they want to share about with the delegates. So there's themes for these things, right? Yeah. What are do we have a theme for this one particularly? What's yeah, our theme? Uh, the theme for this TED Talk is uh, the creative spark. Okay. Uh, basically, we wanted to keep it a general theme because uh, we wanted to target different genres of speakers. So right from engineering to music to art, uh, we wanted to catch all of them. And uh, so when we refer to the creative spark. What we, we meant was um, the moment in your life which caused the change. Take the example of an engineer. Uh, that moment in his life where he researched on something, or uh, he innovated something. And sparked him, that that's, yeah. that's what he wanted to where do. Where was yeah. that Understood. in your life? Where did you get that creative thing? It's pretty deep, I like yeah. that, <laughs> I like that. So what are your jobs, what are your positions? Okay, so I am the license holder, you can say that the organizer or the curator or the founder for the University of Windsor. So you're the reason why it's here? Yeah. Very <laughs> cool, yeah. very cool. Uh, my position is the operations executive. So I deal with pretty much everything. So I deal with audiovisual, I deal with sponsorships, mm -hmm. catering, venue, uh, a little bit of marketing as well. So when is our TEDx University of Windsor talk? That's what you want to call it. It's a long title. We'll work on it. We're going to work on that title. <laughs> okay, so TEDx University of Windsor is going to happen in the engineering building, okay. room 1100, 1100. Uh, it's going to be on 8th of November. Uh, it's starting from, it's a whole day conference with a lunch and two coffee breaks for the speaker and delegates to interact. Is it free? Free lunch? No. It's like, oh, yeah, come on. It's a delegate fee, so you, okay. have, if you pay $20 to attend the conference, which includes everything. It's a whole day conference starting from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. And then it will include 10 live speakers and six free recorded talks. How many people are you expecting? Uh, we are looking at about 100 delegates. Okay. 
and uh, then we of course have 10 speakers we have about 15 team members yes yeah, so there there would be 125 people in roughly the around 125 people present <laughs> okay so you guys said you have 10 speakers uh who's going to be speaking we have selected speakers from different genres so, okay um first speaker is dr simon de trois he's from the drama and arts department at the university and so he's a professor with yeah that. second speaker would be jackie canning Jackie Savvy Ken. Okay. She was the curator for TEDx Windsor way back in 2011. Yeah. Uh, she deals with yoga, meditation, meditation. Oh, stress relief. Finding the chi. You got to find your chi. <laughs> yeah. Understood. So she's the second. Third speaker is our very own Keith Brown, the alumni of the university. The magician. The magician. The magician. Yeah. Doing some card tricks. Um, Hoping yeah. for. He'll be yeah. talking Hoping. more about the magic and mysteries behind the magic. Mysteries behind it. So every uh, speaker, how long do they have to uh, to talk? Uh, each speaker has about 18, 18 minutes. 18 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys going to have a clock up? Like a shot clock? It's it's a, a very time. long shot clock? It's a timer for only the speaker can see it. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, we keep on. After that, we have another person named Barbara Rinde Williams. Uh, he's a Nigerian drummer, I think, from Michigan. Yeah, he's a percussionist. He's a percussionist yeah. from Michigan. So he, his topic is basically rhythm. That's uh, interesting. Yeah, and he's planning to bring like individual drum sets for all the delegates all and the team delegates. members so that he can communicate and show them what's the sole purpose of drums in oh, Nigerian wow. life, in Nigerian culture, how they communicate. Very so cool. it's basically the same with every single speaker. All of them have their own individual stories and they want to share their stories and how it leads to their creative spot. So if anyone wants to contact you about this, mm -hmm. how can we reach you? You can reach us at our website. It's www.tedxuniversityofwindsor.com. Okay. And we have a Facebook page also. So you can just type on Facebook TEDx University of Windsor and you'll find us there. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming, guys. No problem. Coming out of TEDx, which is a very creativity-inspired group, we have Oxley Retreat House, which is an amazing place. They help nurture students and, and adults uh, through religion to help find their religion. This place has peace, tranquility, amazing, beautiful grounds. Let's go to Oxley. I'm uh, Father Michael O'Brien. I'm a priest of the Diocese of London for 47 years. And here at Holy Family Retreat House, I'm known as the priest in residence. I uh, provide for spiritual needs. I celebrate the sacraments, I celebrate mass, and often meet with people. People who come for a couple of days or just want to see me, I'll do spiritual direction or they'll come for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. It, almost every weekend, or if we have a big group here, I'll say to people, now you gotta watch out for something here, and I never know how to describe them, but it, well, it's the Holy Spirit. Watch the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit works here. And it happens every weekend. Somebody's life is really changed in these, these wonderful experiences that I get to share in. I came to Oxley at a grade nine religion retreat with Mr. Olette and my junior class. To be here is to be at a second home, not as much as one you visit every day, but I want as much as you can come here and you know peace will always be present, and that's a beautiful home to have. If I had the option, I'd come back here every day. Just being one with Christ, in a life where peace is very, not very abundant, it comes here in abundancy, which means a lot. Oxley is a, a, a place of refuge and healing and reconciliation. 
and, and I think we need that so much today. This, this run, 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 run. A lot of people, more people now are coming here just to get a break, to get some quiet. And this is the place where we can experience God and experience God through one another and through nature, the beautiful grounds and, and uh, wonderful uh, scenery and experience. It, it, it really is the place of God. One of the things I do with people when they come or they're seeing me for direction is say, I'll say, well, what do you do to stop? What do you do to rest? And, and most people find that very difficult. Just to be alone, to stop, to put everything out of their mind. And that's where they can experience God. God's language is silence. But there, there are time and time again where people experience God through the people around them. Uh, there may be a group here on retreat, or there may be individuals who are here, and there's another group here. And it's amazing how they form a community. Come with an open heart and open mind and allow Christ in, and surely he'll find his way in. I would describe Oxley in one word as home. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mike Speck, Anchor Kumar, with the Lancers Sports Report. You guys need to know the shorts on sports? You talk to these guys. Lancers Sports. Welcome to 401 Sunset, where we bring it you to you, Windsor. I'm Anchor Kumar. And I'm Mike Speck. Big news out of the hockey world this week. The Lancers are set to face off against the McGill Redmen in a rematch of that Queen's Cup game. Lancers might remember that game for Parker Van Buskirk's 50 saves on 52 shots en route to Windsor's first Queen's Cup victory since 1998. Right you are, Mike. Uh, and Windsor seems to be riding high following that impressive start to their OUA season, winning seven straight games. Uh, led by the top line of Spencer Palmels, Captain Drew Palmer, and Kyle Hope. And then you have support on the back end, Kenny Bradford and former OHLer Saverio Poza. They've made life really easy for goaltender Parker Van Buskirk. Now, Kumar, you're the expert on this team. What does Windsor need to do in this one to get another win against McGill, who are perennial contenders in the OUA East? Well, Mike, I think the secondary, secondary scoring has to step up. I'm talking about guys like Blake Blondiel, Mike Christo, and Ryan Green. The other thing is the Lancers have to watch the penalties. Uh, they are one of the most penalized teams in the Canadian inter-university sport, and Parker Van Busker cannot always bail them out of those shorthanded situations. Uh, focusing on those two things, I think the Windsor Lancers can come away with another win. But if the McGill Redmond put up 50 shots or more, don't count on the Lancers to get two goals. Following the match against McGill, Windsor's got a tough schedule coming up. They got a, a trip to Oshawa to play against the UOIT Ridgebacks, as well as a matchup against the York Lions and the Western Mustangs. Who of these teams would you say is the toughest competition? Without a doubt, Mike, it would be the Western Mustangs. They're coming to town on December 3rd to close out the first half of the men's hockey season. And Josh Eunice, tremendous goaltender. We saw it in the playoffs against the Windsor Lancers uh, in the third round of last season. They're going to be a hungry squad when they come back to South Windsor Arena. And they pack a tremendous scoring punch. So out of the teams you mentioned, the Western Mustangs are the one to look after. Well, you heard it here on 401 Sunset. For more information on your nationally ranked Windsor Lancers men's hockey team and other Lancers sporting news, tune in to Lancer Sports on CJAM 99.1 FM every Tuesday from 8 to 9. For Anchor Kumar, I'm Mike Specht. We'll see you next time. 
Hey guys, we're here with V. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank so, you. let's talk a little bit about SAS. SAS. Okay. Uh, um, you know, SAS. That thing. Yeah. Uh, SAS <laughs> is basically a Society of Arts and Social Sciences. Um, we had a carnival actually late October to basically de-stress people from midterms and everything. And it was in Assumption Church parking lot. And there were a bunch of free things. There was free food, free rides, basically, and also just amazing music just to get people through and not stress out their heads and everything. Uh, I also had a chance to sit down with one of the executives, Alexander Boychin, mm -hmm. and two carnival goers to ask them how their experience was. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. My name's Alexandra and I'm the events coordinator for SAS. I'm Steven and I'm in second year computer science. I'm Chris and I'm in first year computer science. happening right now is for students as a distressor from uh, midterms and exams. Uh, we thought it would be a great way to just blow off some steam and have a lot of fun. The carnival is open to everybody, um, but particularly SAS students. SAS is the Society of Arts and Social Science. The events that are being held right now, well we're having a barbecue and we also have um, the the carnival rides. So we have a Ferris wheel, the tumbler, and also the corn maze. And we have cotton candy and popcorn. And they're all free. So right now I'm actually doing the cotton candy for the carnival. So that's why I'm covered in cotton candy. I'm the cotton candy queen today. I came to the carnival for free cotton candy. Free food. Corn maze. Yeah, I went to the carnival because I heard loud music and singing. They were great. Bohemian Rhapsody is a good song. to hold this carnival again next year but that is also really up to the executives who run for SAS next year. Um, we did have some difficulties with it this year so um, hopefully it does run next year but it's hard to say. We will also be holding a gala in January and it'll be a formal gala so it'll be awesome. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I'm here with Daniel Rush, a uh, local musician here in Windsor. So, how's it going? Thank you for coming on the show. I mean, well, really thank you. Yeah. And I want to say I just admire you and honor you for um, doing this for local musicians and uh, helping to support local musicians doing this. It's great. Well, I mean, it's it's great to have uh, local musicians, you know, come on here and and you know showcase their talent. That's you know th that's awesome. So thank you for coming here too. And one thing I say, I'm very humbled to be a musician in this city because there's so many great artists, mm -hmm. great musicians, and uh, people, directors and uh, <laughs> artists, so it's great. Yeah. Well, so tell us a little bit about your work. Like, how, like, uh, what genre do you like to play? <clears throat> um, I love every genre. When I first started playing, uh, back when I was about 19, I um, had an opportunity to audition for a band that was a gospel band. They're out of London and they came to our high school. I went to Belver High School <clears throat> and I found out afterwards they were auditioning for guitar players. Mm -hmm. 
and I went down to London and I applied and um, through circumstances whatever I got the gig so I toured with them for about seven or eight months on the bus and we played Canada's Wonderland and we were in New York and we all over on this bus and it was an experience and I was like oh yeah this is what <laughs> I want to do for sure so uh, but then coming back to Windsor this, the city is not really conducive to musicians you know being mm -hmm. blue collar and so focused on automotive but um, I believe one day when people know you're from Windsor they're going to ask you if you're a musician or a director because I really see the um, artistic part really right. taking off in the city. No, absolutely. I, I think so too. Like, um, yeah, like, I mean, like you're, an, you're a great musician. Like I, hearing you play earlier, uh, it was, yeah, I was blown away. So Thank you. Yeah. I do spend a bit of time doing it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when I decided that this is really wanna, what I want to do for a full-time thing, mm -hmm. I turned it into a job and I, uh, you know, you got to report to work in the morning. So at nine o'clock, I report to my guitar in my chair. You know, mm -hmm. and I have a digital clock, so I will uh, play the guitar for, usually it's a, uh, two and a half hours until I give myself a 15 minute break. And I break it into working on chords and a little behind my head and a little with my teeth, <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to get every little bit of it. There's, I love all styles of music. Right. So eight hours goes by rather quick when you're trying to jam every different style, you know. Well, how long have you been playing for? Um, well, I really got serious around 17 or 18 mm -hmm. and um, one of my big influences in the, from Bell River was a friend of mine named Tommy Bezer. He was a, the principal of the high school's son <clears throat> and very humble guy, wonderful. Um, uh, rest in peace, he just passed away December 12th of this year. That's but exactly. I will never uh, forget him and always want to give an opportunity to say, that's really where my, the passion came from, was from Tom. Mm -hmm. And that was about 17. And that's what I wanted to do. My family's into music. My uh, younger brother's a great drummer. My older brother's a great guitar player and a songwriter. Mm -hmm. My dad plays banjo. So it was really a family thing. My mom plays guitar, you know, and it's going down now the generations where my kids and my nephews and everything are starting to play. So it's really in the, really in the genes, maybe. <clears throat> I, I really don't say that because I think if anybody has a passion to play, it's irrelevant whether it's in their genes or not. I think it's more if it's in your heart right. and you have a desire, then it just comes out, you know? Mm. So now where can, uh, where can our audience like find more stuff about your band? Like they can check out um, Facebook. Okay. <clears throat> and um, now uh, uh, my friend James Gervais uh, mm. was the one that helped me get all that because I'm not really a computer guy, I'm more <laughs> a guitar guy. But he set me up with a nice Facebook um, page and there's a lot of live performances on YouTube from the different clubs. I play a lot of different bars in the city um, like, uh, I do also private parties, like, you know, there's the hockey going on right yeah. now. So I'll be invited to play at people's homes. And during the, you know, the break between periods, I'll perform live music. And then when the game goes back on, then, uh, so I try to play anywhere and everywhere I can. Mm -hmm. Weddings, bar mitzvahs, whatever, whatever <laughs> there is to do, you know. <clears throat> so, but the YouTube has some live stuff and the Facebook and my friend, so if you go on Facebook and I don't um, poke you, is that what they say? <laughs> if I can't poke <laughs> like, you right away, yeah. it's because I really just don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's a learning, uh, it's, there's a little bit of a learning curve. Oh, with, yeah. Was, uh, there was no technology. computers when I was growing up. And learning <laughs> guitar, you know, was just an album. So right. I was learning solos by moving this thing, you know, <laughs> the little stylus is like, oh, I didn't get it this time. And you got to pick it up and move it back in time to try to learn the solo. Now you and just that's use a mouse and scrub Yeah, you can use a mouse, you can go on YouTube and yeah. there's a guy, you know, in Switzerland somewhere teaching you how to play a song, mm -hmm. you know, because they got all the YouTube. So the access to play now and the, um, the, you don't have to buy all the books, but everything is right there to learn how to play. It's much easier now than when I was playing. It was a lot of hard work back mm -hmm. then. So, but I love to play, and I really appreciate this opportunity to be no, here. We really appreciate you coming out. I mean, uh, guys, uh, we're gonna hear them in play live now uh, in our studio. So uh, let's 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 show them uh, what you can do. Right on. I'm Thank I'm you, excited. man. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Rush. <laughs>
you're my love when love can be found you're my peace when peace ain't around you're my hope and all that i need is in you love you're a part of me i can't live without there's no doubt in my mind you bring to me all the love you've got it helps me through those bad times and you're my love when love can't be found you're my peace when peace ain't around you're my hope and all that i need is in you love like a captain without a ship i'd be without you you steer me clear from the rocks ahead and i love the things you do because you're my love when love can't be found you're my peace when peace ain't around you're my hope and all that i need is in you love you're my peace when peace ain't around you're my hope and all that i need is in you love like a captain without a ship i'd be without you you steer me clear from the rocks ahead and i love the things you do is you're my love when love can't be found, you're my peace. When peace ain't around, you're my hope. And all that I need, all that I need is in you, love. Oh, yeah. Matt, wake up. That's a stupid idea. We're going to do it live. This sucks. All right, well. <laughs>